you can see hell, but if you love the world, you still go back to the world. Because earth has a way of eliminating the reality of God and his righteousness. And once your focus is on this earth, you're going to forget all about God. That is why the Bible says that we need to be sober, meaning that you, there, there, you can be, it's possible for you to be in a spiritually drunken state. That is why the Bible is urging us to be sober, to stay sober, because a lot of people who are living their lives here on the earth, they're living like in a stupor. And they only open their eyes like to realize what is real, what is important when it's already too late. People live their lives here, you know. When you tell people about sin, then they say, no, I don't think, I don't think that God is going to care, you know. I don't think it's possible for me to be 100% holy. You know, I'm only human just because they love their sin so much. But once you are in that state of dying, then you're going to realize that the only thing that you should have cared about here on the earth is not to get famous, it's not to get rich, it's not to be loved, it's not to be accepted, it's to be right with God, regardless of whether you are rejected, regardless of whether you are hated, regardless of whether you are despised, regardless of whether it costs you your friends. To be right with God, to be living for his glory. That is the only thing that matters here on the earth. When the Lord showed me a vision of my friend, whom he had shown me that she was in hell. You know, she was my friend like from eighth grade. But when I saw her, I could hear her thoughts. It's as though her thoughts were on loud. And then she was thinking that the only thing that matters in life is to serve the Lord. And she was saying, you know, because she could see me. And then I remember that she was saying, I wish that I was in your place. If I was in your place, I wouldn't waste my time doing anything else. I wouldn't waste my time even hanging out with friends or going for a nice meal at a restaurant. You know, not that it's a sin for you to be with your friends or to be at a restaurant, but I'm showing you how people who are on the other side, how they view life, how they view the seriousness of salvation. That's what she was saying. She was saying, if I was in your place, I wouldn't even waste my time like going to have to a nice restaurant, having, having nice food, or going to hang out with my friends or anything. I would spend all my time praying. I would spend all my time reading the word of God and I would spend all my time evangelizing. That's what she was saying. Those were her words. And only because she could see how important the salvation of the soul is and because she could realize that she has lost that, she has lost it all. And now she was just wishing that if she could just go back to earth, that's how she would live her life, that she wouldn't care about any earthly achievement. It's not a sin for you to have an earthly achievement, but I'm showing you the seriousness of salvation, that that is how the people in hell think. But then we have people who are on earth because they do not know, they do not know the value of eternal salvation. And then they say, I'm too young to save the Lord. And then they say, no, I'm too busy to serve the Lord. And then they say, no, I love my friends too much to serve the Lord. You know, some people tell me that doesn't mean just because I'm a Christian, then I shouldn't even go swimming at the beach because you're saying that I'm going to expose my body. You know, be, doesn't mean that we shouldn't even swim as a Christian. Do you see how people can trivialize salvation? The salvation of your soul is very precious. Anything that, is, that you know is going to cause you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter eternal life without enjoying that thing. Eternal life is precious. 
I don't know how many times that I have seen hell, but hell is something that the Lord has shown me for a long time. I remember the first time that the Lord ever showed me hell was before I got born again. Like just months before I got born again, you know, I was in my room with my younger sister. My sister was reading something like she had a book. I don't know if she was reading or writing something. That is uh, my youngest sister, not Zipporah. She was reading something. And then I was there on the bed. I remember having my phone or something, you know, and that was before I was, I was saved, before I was born again, before I knew anything about the spiritual world. And all of a sudden, when I looked uh, you know, my, uh, where my eyes were facing, I was facing like the corner of the room. And all of a sudden, I could see like a mighty whirlwind, like going around in circles. It was like just going around in circles like that. And it seemed so dark and it looked like an opening to a very dark tunnel. And once I saw it, it was as if I went into a trance. Because... I was trying to wake up because I was scared because as soon as I saw it, I thought that I was dying and that I was going to hell, that hell was going to be my portion. And as soon as I saw it, I was trying to wake up, like for me to just wake up, I could see everything very clearly in the room. I could see my sister, I could see everything that she was doing, but I had no ability to communicate with her. I was just wishing for my sister to just shake me, you know, maybe she will wake me up. That's how I felt, but I couldn't, you know, and at that time, I didn't really understand that the Lord was warning me that this is where you're headed, you know, but I knew that if I died that day, I knew in my heart that I was going to go to hell. I knew it. And it lasted like for some seconds. And after that, everything just vanished and I could wake up. And after I got born again, the Lord has shown me hell so many times, which I've talked about in my, in my, in my testimonies. But you know, something that I was even telling my husband about today is, despite the fact that the Lord has shown me visions of hell so many times because he wants me to share them with his people and despite the fact that i had seen it so many times yet i remember when the lord showed me hell like when i was supposed to go to hell because of altering my hair into a fake look when I saw hell this time around, it seemed as though I had never seen it. Despite the fact that I had seen it, I had, the Lord had taken me there. But seeing it, when I just opened my eyes to see it, the first thing that came to my mind was, so hell is real. And this was a place that I had seen before. It's reality. It's more like, it's more real than this life. Because, you know, I was, I had just finished praying midnight prayer. And then I, I remember that I, I got on the bed. I was facing the window. And when I just laid down on the bed, as I was still there, not like my, my spirit was separated, all of a sudden I heard like a lot of noise. It seemed to be coming from outside. And I, I, was, I was confused. I was like, is there a soccer match? You know, because people here, like when they soccer, they make a lot of noise. Like people love soccer. And I was thinking to myself, that is that, is there, is, is that a soccer match? Because I could hear a lot of people like, oh, 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 I could hear a lot of people making noise, like screaming, you know, from a, it seemed like a crowd. And from a distance, from a distance, and then I thought, is there a soccer match? And immediately I thought that 
that's when my spirit left my body and I was floating into this endless pit and I realized that this is where the noise is coming from this is where the screams are coming from and immediately I knew why I was going there I knew it I knew I was going there because I was straightening my hair from the way God created it I was straightening it from kinky to straight I knew it because God hates perverting his creation God hates it because we are created in his image he hates it when we pervert ourselves it's more like telling God that God you didn't create me properly let me redo it it's an insult to the Lord and I knew exactly why I was going to hell and I, I remember I was floating down like very very fast and when I looked down I saw an endless sea of people and I was like so hell is real like hell is this real and the first thing that th that was the first thing that came to my mind you know because at this time I was fully convinced that this was going to be my portion that I was going there you know and I was just wishing that I wish people on earth knew that it's this real I wish people on earth could could see how real this place is that that was what I was thinking and at the same time I was having a, a great sense of loss I had a great sense of loss to think that I was so foolish that's how I felt that I was so foolish how could I allow myself to come to hell for such a small thing the Lord had spoken to me about it before but it, but it was it wasn't a vision or something it was a still small voice like when I did it it was a still small voice telling me that don't do this and I ignored it I thought to myself that you know what like I don't think it really matters and when I was when I was going there when I saw these people they looked like a sea like literally an ocean and instead of water there were these tiny tiny dots like sands and each sand represents one person you know because I was seeing them from an aerial view I could see their heads and I was still going there I was falling there to go and join those people and this was the, the thing I was thinking to myself I wish people on earth knew how serious this place is and that's how I felt you know when I was going to hell I, I literally felt like I should have lived my whole life for nothing else but the Lord like literally every single waking moment because I re you know at this time I wasn't thinking about what people would think about me I wasn't thinking about maybe something I should I should go and do online I wasn't thinking about any of that the only thought that consumed me in this moment is the thought of eternity and this is when my life truly 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 changed like forever this is when my life truly changed forever when God showed me these two visions of hell the woman of God who had repented you know who let me not say repented who had confessed her sin at her deathbed but the door had already been shut and when I was going to go to hell for blowing my hair to straighten it to pervert what God has created it's a different thing like to 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 do personal hygiene you know like grooming yourself you know like getting a haircut for example as a man or you know yeah putting putting a hair lotion or whatever that's not going to change your hair you know like that's just going to make it healthy and all those things yeah those things you're not doing anything you're not perverting it but if you are perverting what God has created God gave you brown hair you want it black God gave you 
black hair you want it blonde if you are perverting what god has created it's a serious sin to the lord you may say it's not a serious thing you may say god is going to look at your heart that is the state of your heart the state of your heart is that you are vain and it's showing on the outside that you cannot be satisfied with what god has created you to be and you want to become fake and that was going to be my portion hell was going to become my portion and when i looked down in hell when i saw all these people and i i was so surprised at how large hell is because when i looked down i could see it so deep because i was falling down at this you know at a very high speed yet i was not reaching and when i looked to one side it was just endless i couldn't even see the end you know how here in the physical like when you look outside there's where your eyes end in your ability to see you know like you can see like the far horizon you know and that's it you cannot see anything else it seems as though the sky is connecting you know to the earth but not in the spiritual realm because when i when i saw the people who were in hell as i was falling down these tiny tiny dots of people tiny dots because i was up there as i was still going down I just saw crowds and crowds and crowds and crowds and crowds of people and they just kept on they just stretched on forever endlessly and I'm telling you when I had this vision afterwards I had to call all my family members I didn't care whether they are born again or whether they are not born again I had to call them I had to call my brothers I had to call my my mom my dad everybody I had to call them and I had to explain to them the seriousness of this place that don't toy with sin that don't toy with sin that this is the time to seek the Lord that this is the time to humble ourselves in the presence of the Lord and say Lord teach me how to be holy Lord show me the way fill me with your spirit because I saw how real this place was and I was going down and as I kept going down, you know, the, the screams kept getting louder and it, it's as if like they were unified. And I saw that these are real people, these are real human beings. And I realized that these are people, you know, uh, uh, as I was there, this was what was going on in my mind. Like, you know what, like these are people, or these are people who lived like everybody else. And now they are here. I wish people on earth could see this. That nothing on earth matters, that all those arguments we have with one another, you know, like they are not worth it. Like people have arguments and because of pride, they fail to forgive because of pride they fail to make peace people waste their time like gossiping their friends over nothing all those things just fade away people have so much disagreements bitterness anger over earthly things because they are fighting for earthly things they're fighting for money. They're fighting for material things. And all those things are useless. It's not worth it in eternity. Be at peace. Make peace. Forgive. This is the time the Lord has given us to forgive. And to search our hearts and to ask the Lord to help us to forgive others. Because there's no return from this place. I remember the Lord had given me a vision where I was telling one of my brothers, you know, that about hell. And in this vision, like, because of the reality of this place, I was crying. Like, I couldn't stop crying. 
and I was saying to my brother that please I'm begging you don't go to hell don't go to hell because once you get there there is no exit that's what I was saying to him and that's what the Lord is telling us now don't think that no it's too hard for me to be holy I'm young it's too hard for me to be holy I need to fit in it's too hard for me to be holy I need to be accepted it's too hard for me to be holy I'm going to be strange you're going to go to that place alone the same way I was going to that place alone and all these people they had the way that I was feeling how I was feeling foolish I knew that that's how everybody of them was feeling all of them were feeling so foolish I, I remember particularly this one woman who was in hell and among the sins that she was in hell for among her sins was she was using makeup and then she was saying to herself that I can't believe that I failed to let go of my sin just because of wanting to draw a line on my eyebrows you know because of how women do it like you shave off the eyebrows that God gave you you say like they're not good enough let me do it why don't you just create your own human being that's what the Lord had said, I remember this time, that stop changing my creation. If you want those things so bad, why don't you make your own human beings and design them the way that you want? Stop redesigning God's creation. God has made you fearfully and wonderfully. You can be holy in all these things like sexual purity, you can be holy in your language. You can be holy like you're not stealing, you're not murdering, you're not doing all these things. But if you are perverting God's creation, which is you, the temple of the Holy Spirit, I have to warn you. I have to warn you that it is a serious sin that is going to lead you to hell. Repentance includes everything. God hates it. It's a serious thing. Stop being a liar. Stop being fake. So I know that some people... I know that some people say that, oh, it doesn't really matter. It depends on what person. But I have to tell you the way the Lord told me, because this is what the Lord told me. He, he told me to say, warn the women. God hates that. Repent of your sins everything even the men repent of worldliness repentance is for everyone man woman child aged everyone god wants holiness in every part of your life don't conform to become like the world you need to be baptized with the holy spirit the holy spirit is going to start guiding you and telling you that this is sin don't look to people look to the lord Look to the Holy Spirit. He's going to teach you. He's going to be your guide and your teacher. Don't think that you're going to repent on your deathbed. It's going to be too late. Repentance on the deathbed is for those who never heard the gospel. And they hear it on the deathbed like the thief on the cross. And he was saved because they didn't reject the Lord in their lifetime. That was the only time that they heard the gospel of Jesus on their deathbed. But if you are ignoring the Lord during your life, you cannot be cleverer than the Lord. He knows how to save the righteous. He knows how to make sure that you make it to heaven. If you are obedient to him, salvation is a work of the Lord. Because sometimes people get of a worm, like, I don't think I'll, I'll make it to heaven. Salvation is a miracle. It's a work of the Lord. He knows how to save the righteous. He knows how to ensure that you make it into his kingdom. God is going to make sure you make it into his kingdom if you follow him, if you obey him. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's what the Lord said. Don't become like the world. Sin is deadly. 
Sin is very dangerous. You need to be holy and to humble yourself and ask the Lord to set your heart and expose sin in your life. And the Lord is going to do it. But at the same time, God knows how to punish the wicked. You cannot outsmart him and say, I'm going to repent on my deathbed. It will be too late. The door would have already been shut. The day to repent is now to let go of your sin and to follow Jesus, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Life is a serious journey. We are not here to just laugh and, you know, like do all these worldly things, be, you know, waste our time on entertainment, waste our time on all the worldly things and then die. No, that's not why we're here. We're here to serve the Lord. He has sent us here because earth is his vineyard. It's his field. We are here to shine the light of the Lord in the dark place. Don't conform to become the darkness. We are here not to live for ourselves. We are here to live for Jesus. 